Good morning, evening, afternoon, whatever time of day it is where you're at. Welcome to Collider Dailies. I'm John Alditz, and I'm joined today by the voice of God himself, Adam. That's me. <laughs> I was going to say, are you going to actually say anything, or are you just going to stare awkwardly into the camera? <laughs> well, I can either talk or I can look. Those are my two options. Well, all right. Fair enough, I guess. <laughs> I choose so, to look. Uh, Adam, how are you doing today? I am great, John. Thank you for asking. Uh, I'm a little upset. I'm I'm up in Canada, and we've been having just a string of days of nice weather. And then I looked outside this morning, and I saw a bunch of snow on the ground. And then I looked outside about five minutes ago, and the snow is gone, but it's still snowing. So I don't know what to think. Oh, it's one of those like weird bipolar weather days where it's like yeah. weirdly warm, but also like <laughs> not so much yeah those days <laughs> yeah. those days bother me living living yeah. here in washington state we have those days more often than i not. was gonna say Although, yeah it's been it's been pretty sunny as of late and actually I, i've i've run into a unique problem in my apartment that i that shouldn't be a problem but is for some reason <laughs> okay uh all my heaters are turned off in my apartment because like the oh. weather, weather is getting better but right. something is heating my apartment up like enough mm. that I I have had to have fans on in my apartment. So like I that's a little worrying. I think yeah. that I need to, that I might need to figure that out. But <laughs> considering that the weather has a tendency to swing rapidly back yeah. to temperatures, it's not the worst thing I guess because I could just be cold, but you know, <laughs> that's where I'm at. That's that's what I'm dealing with and that's what I've been trying to That is what out. they call Washington the sunshine state. <laughs> They very much do not. <laughs> we get rain like 300 days out of the year here. So it's, it's like constantly wet. Anyways, today on the show, we're going to be talking about a whole bunch of really exciting things. We have a new film coming from the directors of D&D Honor Among Thieves that we're going to be talking about. That's going into production. Uh, we're going to be talking about the Pooniverse, which is a name that I absolutely hate saying, but I have to because it's the title mm. of it. And, of course, the first thing that we're going to start the show off with is the Acolyte trailer. We actually finally got a trailer for the upcoming Disney Plus Star Wars show. And, wow, this looks... I'm, I'm of two minds about this trailer. Adam, oh, okay. And, and I want to I get your take on this. Watching sure. this trailer, I was very excited. I was very sure. excited because I was like, yes, let's get some High Republic actions, get Jedi being Jedi <laughs> and doing all the lightsabers yeah. and cool, like weird force Kung Fu stuff. Let's do it. I'm here for it. And then I thought about it for a few seconds and I was like, uh, did I like that as much as, as I did in the moment? Oh, or is that just me okay. hype over getting, getting something High Republic? Because I, I have sure. wanted to see something High republic -y. Uh, but how did you feel about the trailer? I know that you're 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 like an old school Star Wars man. I am, yes. Yeah. So so for those of you following along at home, I've seen all the films, and in terms of the Star Wars like novels and comics and everything, I sort of uh, took my leave around the time when spoiler alert, Chewbacca got killed by a moon. Uh, at that point, as Legends a kid in grade fun. eight. <laughs> <laughs> this was before they were called legends uh at that point i just could not keep up financially with the just the sheer amount of novels coming out um so everything about the high republic i know really nothing about i know maggie is basically our authority on it um yeah but uh yeah, no, I, I, uh, so, so watching this trailer, every character was new to me. Everything was sort of fresh and, uh, yeah, from a layman's perspective, it looked interesting enough that I'm definitely going to give it a shot. But, uh, for those of us who saw the thumbnail for this, uh, video, that one image that's been put out there is like, where it's just like a, a lightsaber covered in blood and in place of like the actual saber part, it's blood. I really don't know if the show is going to be able to live up to that kind of promise. That image goes so hard. When I yeah. they they released that poster yesterday, and when I saw that, I immediately sent uh, sent a message to my best friend Noah, and I was like, "This this poster is going way harder than anything Star Wars has ever done." <laughs> like, yeah, this is if this is what the show is going to be, I'm immediately on board. And well, that's I mean, exactly it, it. It could very well be. I mean. With with shows like Andor, they have shown that they're not afraid to show kind of a darker side to the Star Wars For universe. sure. So it wouldn't surprise me if it goes that dark. That being said, I think 
because this is High Republic, and High Republic is an mm. era that is so so glitzy, so clean, so regal about everything. I think that if they are going to do that, do that dark, the show is going to lean so heavily on that dichotomy, on oh, that for difference. Sure queen sort of the dark side of things being a corrupting influence and then the high republic being gilded and everything is golden and great um but i don't think that they will necessarily go as grimy and as as dark as i might want them to um, right right but, you know this trailer definitely does have some dark moments it definitely does have some pretty oh, uh potentially horrific moments we'll have to see the full yeah. things out like seemingly an entire team of jedi looking like they're taking on the acolyte uh mm -hmm. and i'm not gonna lie i'm kind of with a lot of people on twitter who are saying i don't think most of those jedi are gonna live um <laughs> although i will say that shot where they all the jedi bust out all their lightsabers i appreciated mm. that blue for the first time in star wars history was the minority color it seemed like there was <laughs> only like one or two blue right. lightsabers while there were yeah a that's a good point and a ton of yellow seeing yellow right. on screen properly for the first time we had a little bit in rise of skywalker but seeing it properly in live action was nice i love that Big yeah that. no i yeah like and and just like looking at the cast and everything and all the people who appeared on screen i spent most of the, so so before i did any reading up on the, on the show or anything uh i did watch the trailer first and i spent the whole time going is that Carrie Moss? That's got it. Sorry, Carrie Ann Moss. That's got to be Carrie Ann Moss. And she was just like, she's such a wonderful person to watch on screen, no matter what. So immediately I was like, okay, so this show is already like grounded for me. Like it's, it's got that like weight to it. There's and, something there. Uh, to, uh, to yeah. Yeah. Out. Yeah. And, uh, and like, and, and I love that about that. And I'm really wondering, again, this could be something that, um, you know, Star Wars scholars who know more about the High Republic than I do, which is nothing. Um, this could be one of those instances where the Acolyte shows up, and I'm not 100% sure just whether the Acolyte is sort of a known entity in the universe, or this is such a surprise to everyone. The, uh, the, only, the only character that we know of that is High okay. Republic, that has been in other High Republic things, is there's a, uh, uh, what is the, the race called? They're green-skinned. Miralins, Miralins. Oh, okay, I think uh, there's there's a character who who is that that shows up that is from I see. Uh, the comics. I want to say, uh, oh, okay, but outside okay. of that, it's all it seems to be all new characters. Okay, okay. Maggie yeah, would be the one who would be a Mag. Player. Yeah, she'd be all over this. <laughs> um, but I'm I'm what I'm curious about is uh, just is this it, it, within the High Republic at this point in time? Are they experiencing sort of the same? issues that they were in the prequel trilogy where uh a lot of the issues that the sort of the the jedi of that era had were were basically like hubris you know like they like they didn't realize that they were sort of like resting on their laurels maybe a little bit too much and that's what I, caught them by surprise this this era of star wars is very much like the lead up to that like you could okay. tell that you could tell that they're becoming a, maybe a little bit too overly confident mm. it is okay. the acolyte is a hundred years before the prequels is yes the time frame that we're looking at so there's definitely going to be that element to it do i think that it's going to be nearly as uh as major of an issue as the prequels present it no mm. um because at this at this point in time the jedi were uh, a lot more noble a lot more like right. like proper knights um, sure, yes. in a lot of aspects so I don't think that there's going to be necessarily like there isn't going to be as much politicking as the as mm, the Jedi got into uh, right. during the prequels, but you never know. We could we could see the beginnings of that because as far as the timeline goes, it would make sense that we're going to start seeing that just a little bit. Um, yeah, absolutely. But, and I mean, no matter what, like this trailer is exciting and it has me excited for the future of what uh, we're going to be seeing with Star Wars. Again, I'm a little torn on it. I, as I said, while I was watching it, I was excited afterwards i just sort of had to step back and ask myself what is it about this that i'm actually mm. excited about i will definitely be watching it it is definitely something right. that i've been waiting for mm -hmm. since they since they announced like their whole slate of releases that they were doing a few years ago and the acolyte was first announced that mm. was the one that got my attention i was like okay I'll right because 
back during Legends, I was a big fan of what used to be called the Old Republic. Now it's the High Republic. Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, that was always my preferred time period. Uh, mm. So seeing some of that finally for sort of the first time in, in certain aspects, because it is a little bit different. Uh, I'm I'm on board for that for sure. Yeah, totally. And, and like my so I know some people's concerns with uh, or criticisms of like Kenobi was that the pacing was just so slow and spaced out. And I think what we might see with this is it could be just quick. From it start does. To finish. It does look like it's a lot more focused on action, a lot more mm -hmm. focused on like beat for beat big things happening and we know that it's going to be like a bit of like a mystery thriller sort of thing so it'll probably mm. be a little bit higher energy um so i don't know i'm just i i i am hopeful that it's going to be great i'm gonna be i'm gonna be sitting there june 4th watching the first couple <laughs> episodes with everybody else having a great yeah. time with it uh so yeah and as i said you can check out the acolyte june 4th that is when it is going to be debuting on disney plus uh disney before plus. we move on to the next thing let's take a look at chat and see what chat is yeah saying. absolutely people have, been, people have been popping in uh jeremy miller says i'm hoping it's similar to mando season one very ambitious with new characters and always cool to see lightsaber action from characters i'm not familiar with yeah honestly yeah that's that's a big one i do i do hope that it kind of has that same vibe as Mando season one being something that's like, this is new. This is fresh. Let's get, let's take a look at something that we haven't looked at yet. And I know that we've gotten a lot of Jedi stuff in the past, but this is an era of Jedi that we haven't gotten. So it, it'll be cool Truly. to like take a look at something new, uh, which I'm always on board for with Star Wars. I think one of the, one of my biggest problems with modern Star Wars is that it leans too much on what there was before. So I'm hoping that with mm. this, we get a new take on things. We get a new spin on things. Um, and yeah, seeing lightsaber right. action characters i'm not familiar with just seeing lightsaber action in general i'm one of those weirdos <laughs> who goes on who goes on youtube and just watches star wars fan films just because oh I just yeah want to watch lightsaber fights i mean exactly, i watch star yeah. wars fan films because i love the art but also i just want to watch <laughs> lightsaber fights uh but yeah that's just me uh arrow says i feel they have to deliver on the grimy and darkness in the acolyte if they are to take a run on andor success i'm super excited though with zero knowledge of this era from the books or video games or comics yeah or arrow you and me we're in the same boat yeah uh, my my knowledge of it is only passing i've finished one book i'm working my way through the second one uh <laughs> all of this at maggie's direction uh <laughs> yeah she is definitely the one to be speaking to this and i guarantee you on the next episode that uh, that we're on we're going to be talking about this if not on the show we'll at least oh, be talking sure. about it on the call uh because <laughs> you guys you guys miss out on some fantastic conversation before and after the show because a lot of times <laughs> like we'll like we turn off the live and then the conversation keeps going and sometimes, sometimes for like, a couple man, hours just, there have been a couple of times <laughs> there have been some times where i was just like man we should just left that live going and just let it run mm. but <laughs> is what it is uh <laughs> yeah so i think that yeah, I think that at the very least, it'll be great just to see something new. And I think that that'll, yeah, be, yeah. that'll be the big selling point for this, I think. Uh, really? All right, moving on to the Pooniverse. Uh, yes. Is there something else that I could say for that? Because, like, I mm. feel like I'm saying a dirty word. The Winniverse. The Winniverse. The, 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 the Christopher Winnie the Robin Pooh. Universe of Terror. Yeah the the yeah. public domain horror universe <laughs> anyways yeah it, the puniverse monsters assemble i believe is the title yeah. Uh, yeah monsters assemble is apparently going to be a crossover between a whole bunch of public bunch. domain childhood favorites that are being turned into horror monsters as we all know uh we got a film called winnie the pooh blood and honey a little while back yeah uh after winnie the pooh fell into public domain mm -hmm. and uh yeah they turned it into a horror film and honestly yes, it wasn't it wasn't great i don't know if you've seen it adam i have i have not it it it's one of those movies where if you don't think too hard about it it's at least enjoyable but if you think okay. about it for longer than three seconds uh or allow your brain to function at all sure. it just physically hurts to watch um okay. But we are getting a sequel, which will be in limited theatrical release later on this month, Blood and Honey mm. 2. And apparently with that, we got the knowledge that we are getting a whole bunch of standalone titles all building up to one giant horror movie crossover. Uh, the movies that we are getting are Bambi the Reckoning. Which uh. apparently, apparently Bambi is going to be going to town on somebody. Uh, Peter Pan's mm. Neverland. 
Neverland Nightmare, sorry. Neverland uh, and Nightmare. Pinocchio Unstrung. Here's the thing. Out of those three, Pinocchio is the one that I buy the most as a horror film. Sure. I mean, like, like going back to sort of the, the original fairy tale of Pinocchio, like, he's, he's not a great little puppet there. So, like, no. if they, if they really the go back a, to the roots. Just the idea of a living puppet in general just terrifies me. Yeah, uh, you have a thing with puppets. Yeah, I don't like puppets. Um, <laughs> I mean, I, I like, let me rephrase that. I don't like puppets. I like Muppet. Mm. Yes, Muppets are fun. It's like puppets... if they're fuzzy, I'm on board. Yeah. It's when they're made of wood and from okay. uh, you know, strings on top. No. Hmm. Mm -mm. That's interesting. Okay. Get away from me See, with like, that. Like those movies that you named, like Bambi the Reckoning, uh, Peter Pan's Neverland Nightmare, and um, the third one, that uh, Pinocchio, on strong. Like all three, they sound like they have potential. I will say that. <laughs> they're like, they're going to be interesting at the very least. Like Bambi the Reckoning, like immediately my mind goes to. I mean, <clears throat> again, I hate to spoil a movie for somebody, uh, but it's been out for almost a hundred years. Bambi's mother, unfortunately, passes. And I feel like anything titled Bambi the Reckoning, uh, we're going to get some kind of, some form of revenge. I'm so trying maybe to, I remember some, some hunters out in the woods. I think I, I read a plot synopsis of Bambi. Oh, okay. And I'm trying to remember what it was. I'm looking at it right now. Because I think it's something along the lines of like someone's car hits Bambi's mom and then oh. Bambi goes after them or something like that. I can't remember. It doesn't seem like we have it. Uh, right. But yeah, I did. I did hear about it separately. Uh, but either yes. way, that's just, that's just absolutely ridiculous, but it's all going to be building towards a film. That's going to be coming out in 2025 entitled Puniverse monsters assemble, uh, which will have not only those, public domain characters coming together, but we'll also include uh, it, its cast will apparently be made up of Pooh, Tigger, Rabbit, Owl, Piglet, Pinocchio, Sleeping Beauty, Bambi, the Mad Hatter, Peter Pan, and Tinkerbell. My word. There's not going to be any room for any victims. <laughs> Pretty much. I think the only thing potentially more terrifying than that lineup would be Disney's lawyers. Uh <laughs> Yeah, I think you, yeah, that would be, and that's a movie all in itself. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Arrow says, it's one thing for the fandom of these films to call it the Puniverse in jest. It's another for the creator <laughs> slash marketing team to present it as the Puniverse. For me, that's just ridiculous. Uh, and he has a second part to that comment. And my brain can't turn off for the most part, but I can't <laughs> enjoy these films as well as others. Uh, yeah, I think... They know what they're doing by calling oh, for it sure. the universe. As I said, I I feel like I'm saying a dirty word every single time that I say Puniverse. And I feel like if you slow it down and you think about it, you'll probably figure out what word I think I'm saying. Uh, but it is just, it's just, it also just doesn't feel good like being said. You know, I like some words, like they have a good feel to them. This one does not. Like it just, it, it does just, not have a good mouth feel. No, it just feels chunky coming out. Uh, that's, yeah. that's me being someone who talks for a living, getting into the semantics of how words feel. Uh, I feel the same way about the word portion. Portion. Something about really it. have an issue with yeah. the word portion? That's a weird Yeah, word something then. about it. Well, I mean, like think back to Is um... the part. <laughs> no, it's just like right as, a, as a whole. Like think back to Simon Pegg's character in, um, uh, the Force Awakens, when he's like one portion, one and portion. just like, just the the like, oh, just so much going. Yeah, on that was Simon Pegg. I if you didn't know who that was. Yes, yeah, surprise. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, okay, I guess I can kind of get it. Uh, Jeremy Miller <laughs> says Pinocchio horror film. I thought that was the recent Disney film. There was yeah, some like well. it was some absolutely. Uh, yeah, that was some creepy <laughs> uh way earlier on before we even started the show or as we were starting the show mike joyce said is the is the puniverse where mr hanky is from <laughs> ah. oh boy wow honestly i think i would be uh more on board for that jeremy miller yeah. says bambi should be uh a more of an action revenge movie the rock did a oh yes now yes i remember that skit that was pretty good uh <laughs> yeah i don't know it's it 
is a thing that's going to be happening. Uh, mm-hmm. And if you are a fan of bad movies, like that sort of like subgenre of like low budget, like sure. cranked out horror films, this will probably be right up your alley. I'll watch them because I'm a horror fan. And so I feel like I got to, to be like part of the zeitgeist conversation, but right. uh, you know, otherwise I don't think I'd be too overly interested in this. Well, I, I, I do have a question as someone who has seen the movie, like you said, you have, uh, yeah. is there any sort of like level of like mysticism to that movie or is it strictly no. just, okay. So that it, makes that like all those characters, they're going to really, <laughs> I mean, I know this might be a low effort, low budget thing, um, but like they're really going to have to work on creating a backstory for these people. There's okay. Let me rephrase that. There is a little bit of okay. mysticism, okay, like a okay. small, small amount. In, like it doesn't really play into the plot other than Got it. like at the beginning of the film, they explain that like the whole Christopher Robin in, in hundred acre wood, like that, mm-hmm. those stories were all real, but Christopher Robin like grew up and stopped going to hundred acre wood. And now the, the animals are all, he put away childish things. Yeah. Basically, uh, (laughs) little toys and angels wings. Um, I'm going to make a reference to something that nobody else has ever heard. Uh, (laughs) Anyways. Uh, yeah. So that is happening and be sure to be either on board for it or not. Yep. That's the only way to go. Or just sit there and have fun saying Puniverse. Puniverse. Or don't. Yeah, and Anyways. I just and w- w- one more thing about it. Uh, okay. You said that the the Avengers type movie is coming out in 2025. Yeah, they're doing it we're, quick. We're three months into 2024. That is insane. They're like, they have to be filming way. all of these at the same time. Um, I just we don't have a date in 2025, so it could <laughs> be okay. It could be like December 31st, 2025. True, true. But, Still, kudos, you know, kudos to their workflow. I will say well, that you've you've worked on independent horror films and stuff before. <laughs> yes. You know how this goes. It like you can do them pretty quick. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. We've we've both been on those sets. We know how those things yep. flop. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, that that is <laughs> is a thing. Uh, do you know what else <laughs> is <laughs> Poo Ventures Assemble? <laughs> I hate it. God, I hate that so much. But it, but it sounds better than Pooniverse. It does. I, I much prefer Poo Avengers. Uh, anyways, that's not the only film that is in production. Is another no. film that's actually in production. And this one is one that I have some faith might actually be pretty decent. Uh, sure. So the guys behind Dungeons & Dragons Honor Among Thieves, Jonathan Goldstein and John Francis Daly, have another film that is entering production officially entitled Dungeons & Dragons 2. Oh, what? Oh, as much as I and everybody else would be so <laughs> on board for that. Uh, no, sadly, it is May Day. We will. Okay. I have faith we'll get Dungeons and Dragons too down the line. Oh, for uh, sure. But anyways, this film is starring Ryan Reynolds and Kenneth Branagh, which is a pairing mm. that I didn't know that I needed. Uh, yeah. Because that honestly sounds pretty dang good. Outside of that, we don't really know a lot more. It is an Apple Studios production, uh, and it appears it is going to be doing something, something across multiple countries. That's all that we see. Oh, know really? okay, okay. We got a, we got a, we got a. Uh, a picture, a post, uh, sort of announcing the production was starting, and mm. it was a chair in front of what looks to be some sort of Russian theater of some kind because there's uh, Cyrillic writing at the top of the marquee. Okay. So, I don't know. So we'll see what happens. Is... Yeah, maybe this is some kind of connection to the May Day Revolution. Oh, look at you forming, forming, Doing your connections and doing your speculation. <laughs> That's how you do that. That's how you take care of that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. I honestly, no matter what this film is, I have faith that it will at least be fun because those two, oh, at the sure. very least, are spectacular writers. They have written just some absolutely brilliant work, including a lot of the Spider-Man stuff as those guys. Mm. Uh, and as I said, Dungeons and Dragons, Honor Among Thieves. So at the very least, it'll be a fun movie, especially when you put Ryan Reynolds into that grouping. Yeah. It's probably going to be a fun time. And I mean, like Kenneth Branagh, like his range is so fantastic. Like he can do comedy. He can do very like serious drama. And and it's just to see the two of them together will be very, very I have, interesting. I have so much respect for Kenneth Branagh, specifically like modern Kenneth Branagh. Because mm. I felt like like a couple of decades ago, he, he had this, this sort of like 
air of superiority about him where it was like okay, okay. He's, in all the, he's in all the shakespeare stuff and he he's a right. shakespeare guy he does like the the fancy yeah. like he does those but he's, he's a fan he, you know it's which i mean i love i love shakespeare when i was in college mm-hmm. when i was an english major for that short little while i did focus my studies <laughs> on shakespeare like i'm right there right. with him but mm-hmm. he he felt almost a little snooty but i feel like he kind of he kind of got rid of that image and now he's 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 kenneth everyone everyone That's, wants to work with okay kenneth, even though he's still just I, doing like agatha christie things and uh yeah which are know. fantastic and and, uh, and like even like his work as as a director like he directed the first and second thor films just the like first. Uh, was, uh somebody else on the oh second. i thought he, i nope. thought he did the second well, he only did my one mistake uh he also uh that fantastic jamie dornan film that it, the name escapes me um it was all in black and white. Belfast. Hmm. I haven't seen that one. Super, like, just simply amazing. And uh, and and I know what you're talking about, where it's like now he's just sort of Kenneth, like the fun Kenneth kind of thing. I really think that sort of I'm not going to call it a decline because for sure no. it's if anything better and better and better. But uh, I think that all began in the ooh was it the second Harry Potter film that he was in as Gilderoy Lockhart? Yeah. And it's that just like that just showed that. he was. He was for sure, you know, ready, willing, and able to sort of poke fun at himself. To expand just... what he was working on. To, exactly. To yeah. Move outside the bounds of, you know, sort of stuffy British drama. Uh yeah. I I I, I keep feeling like I'm saying that and like people are gonna hear it like it's a bad thing. Like <laughs> I like all of those things, but you you get what I'm saying. Uh anyways, uh Jeremy Miller says besides the remake of Vacation, I've enjoyed everything that they've done. Seriously, those those two, Goldstein and Daly, are just so good. They've they've knocked out park everything that I've seen. I haven't seen the remake of Vacation. So maybe no, I haven't myself. Uh, you know, maybe that is a dud. Uh Arrow Maxwell <laughs> says those Dutch angles gave me vertigo in the first Thor film. Joking about vertigo, but you get it. Yeah, I get what you mean. There was a lot yeah. of that off kill. Yeah, <laughs> sort of evoking that 60s Batman. That was you know, that like, was during that was during a time in the MCU when they were kind of able to be a little bit different with mm-hmm. their movies, where not everything was so cut and like this is this is the MCU look. <laughs> um, but you know, it is what it is. Either way, that's all the news that we have today. Uh, yeah, all great stuff. Yeah. All good stuff. Uh, Fantastic stuff, Adam. Yeah. Besides, besides I I want to I want to give people a little bit of I want to take a minute here to give people a little bit of an insight into what the voice of God actually <laughs> does. You want to you want to talk okay. for a little bit about like what part of the Collider Dailies process you are involved with and what you're doing behind the scenes like during So So when it comes to people seeing or hearing the show I'm involved from start to finish. So we've got the wonderful people like yourself and Perry and Steve and Maggie who are actually choosing which stories we're talking about each day. And then they they sort of give me a list and this is like, all right, this is what we're going to be talking about today. Make a thumbnail for YouTube. That's sort of the first step for me, at least. And uh, so I make the fun little uh, thumbnail and then, you know, it uh, it gets perfected as time goes on. And then we, we make the post for all of you to come join us on either on Twitter or on YouTube. And uh, yeah, and and then all you lovely people are watching. Right now, I could see 549 people are watching, which is fantastic. Hello to you all across the globe. Or if you're all in one spot watching together, that's great, too. And that is, just so you know, that is across YouTube and Twitter, because we live stream yeah. this on on both yeah, and you on. absolutely, yeah, if one day you're feeling Twitter, just come watch us on there. But uh, yeah, so while the show is actually happening and you're not seeing me on screen or hearing me, uh, I am just sort of, I'm looking at all your comments, <laughs> usually laughing, uh, and I am just, uh, I'm helping, I'm, I'm also helping choose which comments come up on the screen. Like if I were to uh, just come over here and let's say Mad Hatter is the only one that's kind of horror, boom. We talk about that, then that goes away. That's sort of I'm I'm doing all that behind the scenes as well as choosing the uh, the banners that come up and things like that, as well as uh, the intro and outro and everything like that. So once that's all done, everybody goes on their merry way, and uh, then I put together the podcast. So if you ever miss the show and uh, you know you're out and about and you want to listen to us, you can check, catch us anywhere you listen to podcasts. Um, and we're usually up within about 20 minutes after the show 
goes live on on YouTube and Twitter. Yeah, uh, so yeah, if you're going to bed, they ish. Have to be a little slow. Yeah, it can be. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, and then after that, if you're just looking for sort of like a, just a nice bite sized piece of what goes on uh, in the show that we think it, like, you know, people really need to know about, uh, you can catch a nice little short every day. That's uh, just a little excerpt from the show. And maybe you might want to go and watch the entire show just to see where that conversation came from and what came from it. I yeah, that's, that's I want to I want to emphasize how much work Adam does behind the scenes. <laughs> that like i feel doesn't get recognized and i want it to be more recognized because holy crap adam does so much uh Thank did adam you, create the catchy that. music uh correct me if i'm wrong you didn't I chose create it. The music, but you found it i did i did find it we it, we went through a very vigorous process of uh of oh oh vetting songs and ultimately this one was the best one just because it's punchy it's fun it's exciting and uh really gets you going and so what you're hearing in the intro and outro uh of the show are the actual basically the intro and outro of the song as well and uh yeah everything in between it's just it's nice it's catchy it's it's really fun and uh the only thing that would make that song better are some lyrics so if anybody out there wants to write some lyrics can't guarantee we'll use them but it'll be fun to read them Maybe you should send me the full song and I'll, and I'll see. <laughs> yeah. if I, I was a music fun fact about me. I was, uh, so I went to, when I went to college, I took seven years to get a four year degree because I'm lame, I guess. Do it uh, fast or do it right. And, uh, the majority of the time I was actually a music major. I was a, uh, I was a vocal performance major for the majority of my college career. And then I decided that I would like to make money. So then I got a media degree and threw that idea immediately out the window. <laughs> so, but anyways, uh, yeah, yeah, so that's good. And I know that you do, you also do other stuff for Collider. You, you I do. Collider. Yes. So, so uh, for all of you out there, uh, there's just, you're watching dailies. You're probably watching other Collider stuff. If you've ever watched ladies night for the past three years, I've been editing all of those interviews with Perry and just there have been some oh some wonderful guests that have been on there. Been and it's years? always it really has, I think. Wow. Maybe two. That show still I've, feels like new to me. Yeah, yeah. I'm coming up on a hundred episodes of Ladies Night in uh edited. Well, thank you very much. Um, but yeah, it's just been it's just been such a pleasure to work on that. Um, because like you're seeing Perry in her element as an interviewer like she knows how to make a conversation work and anybody that she's ever interviewed has just been like like you see the light appear in their eyes where they're just like this is a good interview i am so happy to be here and so watching that as i go through the editing process it never gets old and uh yeah so i, I suggest watching just pick any ladies night and you're gonna have a great time watching that and uh, yeah, and, and also for those of you who are interested in interviews from South by Southwest, Perry did 20 interviews last week. And 20, you, edited, yeah. you edited her interviews, right? I yes, I've edited twenty interviews, <laughs> and uh, and they're they're really really interesting and really fun. Like so much stuff comes through South by Southwest. Like even I didn't realize at the time, because like in addition to Perry doing twenty interviews, I'm not sure how many Steve did, but at least that many, I'm sure as I well. Think he did a dozen. I can't remember exactly how many. He yeah, did. it's oh, it's 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 just crazy, and just the like the the quality of the film that comes through there, as well as the quality of the interviews. Like there's nobody who was interviewed who didn't have just such amazing, profound things to say. And, and again, it's because of Perry that those things came out. Like, it's just, it's so great. So I can't wait for you guys to be able to watch those. Uh, a number of them actually are up right now on the Collider interviews, YouTube page, as well as you can watch them on Collider. Um, so yeah, I encourage people to just keep an eye out for that stuff because they're so good. And it's so interesting. And I'm so excited for like all of these movies that are going to be coming out. I cannot wait. And yeah. And now I, I've been talking way too much about myself. Meanwhile, John, every almost every video you see on Collider is because of John. Like he does <laughs> not, so not quite so much. That. We have we do have a wonderful <laughs> video team uh here on Collider. Uh just some absolutely talented folks. Alex uh Alex Caro 
and Joseph Martin. I had to actually look over to remember their last name. <laughs> uh, also make feature videos alongside me. Uh, they're producing fantastic work. I do three videos a day. I believe each one of them does two videos <laughs> a day. Uh, so that's a lot of work the, that our video team is putting in. And it's you can check amount. it out both on the Collider main channel. Uh, so that would be just Collider on YouTube, not Collider Extra, mm -hmm. Collider Interviews. And then I thought, just Collider. You'll know which one it is because it has a black logo as opposed to a green logo like everything else. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, you can check out all those or you can check them out on Collider.com. They are mm -hmm. up there on a whole bunch of feature and list videos is what I've been working on. But anyways, if you want to check out more stuff that uh, Adam here has done, he doesn't appear in front of the camera nearly as much these days as he <laughs> used to, used to, used to do collider news videos. But uh, yes. yeah, you can go, you can go check out a lot of stuff that he's edited all the, all the ladies night stuff, all the South by Southwest interviews. And there's also just like a whole bunch of smatterings of stuff all across the <laughs> web that you can check out of his. Uh, yeah. That's all we're gonna, that we have time for today. Tomorrow uh, is going to be, I believe, looking at the schedule. It is myself and Perry, so you can check that out. Excellent. It'll be the same, same time, same place, all that jazz. But until then, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, uh, and uh, I'll see you next time. All right, everyone. Here comes the outro. Get your lyrics minds working.